welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering uh, being uh, produced by IIT Bombay. So this is module 4 lecture 5 on stress strain relationship and shear strength of soils. So in the previous lecture uh, we tried to inter, uh, understand about the different uh, stress strain behaviors of uh, mild steel and uh, you know also we try to see and try to understand about the strain hardening and strain uh, softening and uh, elastoplastic and uh, you know rigid uh, plastic or perfectly plastic uh, behaviors. So after having uh, discussed about the stress strain relationships now we will introduce into the, the Mohr Coulomb uh, criterion and uh, we will discuss about uh, the relevance uh, to the uh, you know how we can actually determine by knowing the state of the stress on the element how you can actually determine the uh, stresses at failure particularly uh, the shear stress uh, and the normal stress along the failure plane. Uh, so this is uh, you know the contents which are actually given then uh, the which we are going to concentrate in this lecture is the more uh, column failure criteria and uh, its limitations. So as we have seen uh, you know in the previous lecture uh, you know the stress strain relationship of a mild steel uh, you know has a little hump you know after uh, its proportional limit. So the little hump in the stress strain curve for mild steel after uh, yield is an example of work hardening and many soils also exhibit uh, work hardening. For example compacted clays and loose sands when they are uh, subjected to shear and they uh, you know exhibit this so called work hardening phenomenon. So sensitive clay soils and dense sands are examples of work softening so that means that after retaining certain peak value then there is uh, you know a sort of uh, you know decrease in the stress with an increase in the strain. So at what point on the stress strain curve do we have failure that is uh, you know the interesting we have to uh, you know understand. In uh, some situations what will happen is that if a material is stressed to its yield point the strains or deflections are so large that uh, for all part practical purposes the material has failed from the survivability point of view. So this means that the material cannot satisfactorily continue to carry the applied loads and the stress at failure is often very arbitrary especially for non-linear materials and particularly for uh, you know the, those materials which are undergoing work hardening like uh, compacted clays and loose sands. Uh, we take arbitrarily at say some 10 percent strain or 15 percent strain. So when these materials uh, like uh, you know which are undergoing work hardening we usually define failure at some arbitrary percent strain a 15 percent or 20 percent or at a strain or deformation at which the function of the structure might be impaired. So that uh, you know the we define the strain it can be of say 5 percent or 10 percent or 15 or 20 percent or a strain. Uh, or a deformation at which the function of the structure might be uh, you know affected. Now we can also de uh, define the strength of the material uh, it is the maximum or the yield stress or the stress at some strain which we have called defined as a failure. So that is the, the strength of the material. So there are many ways of defining failure in materials. Uh, or put another way there may be uh, many failure criteria will be there but most of the criteria uh, do not work for soils. So the most common uh, you know failure criterion which can be applied to soils is the Mohr Coulomb uh, failure criterion first the uh, Mohr uh, hypothesis has been given and uh, then uh, the Coulombs uh, you know uh, have Coulomb has come out with uh, uh, you know the based on the experience with uh, construction of the uh, walls uh, you know uh, during his time he has come out with uh, you know made attempts to determine the shear strength of the soil. So then it has turned out to be the more Coulomb failure criterion which is actually uh, being used widely even today. So the Charles Augustine D Coulomb. Uh, is well known for his uh, you know studies on friction electrostatic uh, attraction and repulsion. So he has put forwarded uh, you know uh, contributed to the Mohr Coulomb uh, criterion. Uh, similarly uh, Otto Mohr uh, he hypothesized a criterion 
of failure of for the real materials in which he stated that materials fail when the shear stress on the failure plane at failure reaches some unique function of the normal stress on that plane. So Moore's hypothesis uh, states that uh, you know uh, the failure for the real materials in which he stated that material fail when the shear stress on the failure plane reaches some unique function uh, of the normal stress on that plane. So uh, tau suffix ff is equal to function of sigma suffix ff. Now if you see this uh, the two f's which are there two suffixes the tau is the shear stress sigma is the normal stress. So the first uh, subscript f refers to the plane on which the stress acts in this case the failure plane the stress acting along the failure plane the second f is nothing but at failure. Suppose if you are actually trying to see uh, tau along the uh, tau f we write then that indicates that uh, the shear stress along the failure plane may not be at failure. See sim similarly our prospective failure plane or sigma f we write the normal stress on the failure plane or the prospective failure plane. So when we write so the Moore's hypothesis uh, states that the tau is a function of uh, sigma ff where uh, the shear stress at uh, along the failure plane at failure that is the tau ff and uh, sigma ff is nothing but the normal stress along failure plane at uh, failure. So uh, you know these are uh, you know the uh, you know the earlier hypothesis which are actually put forwarded and uh, a failure theory basically is required to relate the available strength of a soil as a function of measurable properties uh, and the imposed stress conditions. So the more uh, Coulomb uh, failure criterion is commonly used to describe the strength of the soils and its main hypothesis is based on the premise that a combination of normal and shear stress creates a more critical limiting state uh, than would be found if only the major principal stress or maximum shear stress were to be considered individually. So it is uh, something like a combination of uh, you know uh, the normal stress and shear stress along the failure plane are considered rather than uh, you know the major principal stress or maximum shear stress were to be considered individually. So in the, the failure theory is basically is required to relate the available strength of a soil as a function of measurable properties and the imposed stress conditions and the more Coulomb failure criterion is commonly used to describe the strength of the soils. So the main hypothesis is based on the premise that a combination of normal and shear stresses creates a more critical limiting state than would be found if only the major principal stress or you know the maximum shear stress uh, were to be considered individually. So here in this particular slide uh, an element which is actually subjected to uh, you know major principal stress that is uh, sigma 1 f and uh, you know minor principal stress that is sigma 3 f is shown and a failure plane uh, which is uh, you know inclined at uh, let us say here uh, alpha f and uh, this is the sigma f f is the failure plane. Uh, you know uh, failure uh, uh, normal stress along failure plane at failure tau ff is nothing but uh, you know uh, now shear stress along failure plane at failure. So according to Moore's hypothesis uh, it is uh, a nonlinear uh, you know envelope where the tau sigma uh, you know is ranging for the given ranges of the normal stresses in a nonlinear way. So you can see that this envelope actually uh, extends like this is a nonlinear way so this is an equation for the tau f is equal to uh, function of sigma f f. So these, these stresses are actually acting here this is tau f f and this is sigma f f this is the normal stress along failure plane this is the failure plane at failure and uh, this is the shear stress along failure plane at failure. So uh, if you see this element at failure uh, with the principal stresses that cause failure and the resulting normal stresses and shear stresses on the failure plane. So we will uh, assume that uh, the failure plane exists which is not bad assumption for soils and rocks and many other materials. So these failure planes uh, basically if the material is homogeneous and uh, if there are no uh, you know the uh, if there is no there are no stresses along the major principal planes and minor principal planes then there is a possibility that you know we can actually have uh, you know conjugate uh, failure planes that means that we will have uh, you know failure planes uh, in both the directions. So if you know that the principal stresses at failure we can actually draw a Mohr circle 
to represent the state of uh, stress in uh, for this particular element. So, with that uh, you know we will be able to get uh, the uh, you know the so called uh, the strength of the materials uh, at the strength of the material at failure. So, uh, in this uh, particular slide uh, what we have shown is that uh, a more, uh, more hypothesis according to more hypothesis uh, the envelope is uh, nonlinear and uh, which actually indicates that tau ff is equal to uh, function of sigma ff and, uh, and this is actually shown here and this is the failure plane and which is actually assumed for uh, it, uh, it, uh, it exists uh, you know for the soils, uh, soils and rocks and many other materials. Now, uh, if you look into this, that uh, the as it had been told, that if you have got a Mohr circle, though, though generally we are actually indicating the upper half of the Mohr circle for convenience, but uh, if the material is actually having, uh, you know, the uh, homogeneity, then you know this type of conjugate uh, failure planes or home failure planes can be possible. That means that the failure plane one can be inclined like this, and the other other uh, the bottom portion of the circle, it uh, can have like this. So this is the the more failure envelope which is uh, you know uh, which is which appears like this. So, uh, the more column failure criterion a uh, failure point of tangency defines the angle of failure uh, plane in the element of the test specimen. So, the where uh, you know this is the major principle stress and then uh, when you draw this is the pole and from here when you draw a line where uh, you know the more envelope more failure envelope is in contact with the uh, you know the more circle here and here and this inclination indicates that angle of failure plane uh, angle of failure plane in the element of the specimen. So, this is uh, you know you can see that uh, along this uh, these are the stresses which are uh, tau ff and uh, sigma ff and these are actually arisen because of uh, you know the major principle stress sigma 1f and minor principle stress sigma 3f and uh, uh, when we have uh, you know the homogeneity then you know there is possibility that you know we also have the failure plane in this direction. So, this is actually parallel to this one. So, the more failure hypothesis is actually illustrated for uh, element at failure uh, uh, as actually shown in this uh, particular uh, figure and uh, the more failure uh, hypothesis basically states that the point of tangency of the more failure envelope with the more circle at failure determines the inclination of the failure plane. So, uh, in another way more uh, failure uh, hypothesis can be stated the more failure hypothesis states that the point of tangency of the more failure envelope with the more circle at failure determines the angle of uh, inclination of the failure plane. So, uh, in this uh, you know the combination of now uh, you know uh, you know the Coulomb what he has said is that. Uh, yeah, the uh, for the he said that there are two types of parameters are there one is a stress dependent parameter and other one is stress independent parameter and uh, the stress dependent parameter is nothing but uh, some friction between the grains and uh, stress independent parameter is uh, you know the cohesion actually interaction develops between the soil grains. So, uh, this actually uh, when it is combined with the Mohr and uh, Coulomb then you know this is indicated as a linear uh, relationship within the stress range uh, which uh, so beyond at higher stresses uh, the validity of this uh, uh, Mohr Coulomb uh, you know this thing uh, cannot be guaranteed. But for the uh, you know that, that means that the linearity whatever we assume is actually valid for the uh, you know the assumed the stress range. And in this the tau versus sigma plot here this indicates that you have to have a combination of sigma and tau f such a way that the the stress at failure is tau f is equal to c plus sigma tan phi. So, if this happens to be the failure shear stress then it will be tau f f c plus sigma f f tan phi. So, the failure will thus occur at any point in the soil where a critical combination of shear stress and effective normal stress develops. So, basically the failure will actually develop in the in any at any point in the soil where a critical combination of shear stress and effective normal stresses you know the develops. So, tau f is the maximum shear stress the soil can take just before failure under normal stress of sigma sigma. So, the, the, the shear strength equation which is popular is actually is tau is equal to c plus sigma tan phi which is like y is equal to m x plus c 
where uh, the intercept here uh, C is this uh, cohesion intercept and the angle of inclination of this uh, Mohr Coulomb failure anolo is uh, the and, uh, angle of internal uh, friction that is the friction angle it can be seen here. So uh, when you have the combination of uh, you know tau f and uh, sigma uh, the failure will thus occur at any point in the soil where a critical combination of shear stress and effective normal stress develops. So uh, further uh, it has been uh, uh, shown here the same uh, with the cohesive component which is the uh, put uh, so the shear strength is actually contributed with uh, two components one is the cohesive component and the other one is friction component. So we have tau f is equal to c plus sigma f tan phi higher the values of c and phi the higher the shear strength of soil. So if you have a material which actually can give, develop a good cohesion and a good friction then uh, the material actually uh, is prone to have higher uh, shear strength. So let us consider uh, some uh, uh, you know typical examples where uh, more circles and failure envelopes how we can actually construct. So let us see that if you look into this here we have two more circles which are written one more circle circle A and circle B and uh, there is a, uh, a line which is uh, you know uh, the more Coulomb failure envelope uh, which is uh, uh, indicated as a uh, straight line and uh, this indicates that uh, the circle B uh, is uh, stable though it actually has got uh, the stresses uh, uh, more than uh, uh, you know. Uh, the, the, the combinations is such that the circle A is actually at failure. So you can see that the possibility that the circle A can be located here that element here and the circle B is somewhere here. So it indicates that uh, the in a slope if you consider uh, this can be at the toe. So where you have the possibility of the failure here and uh, the circle B is at the location uh, away from the toe. So you can see that this is uh, can be under stable condition. So this is further discussed uh, here where we have we show uh, here the shear strength tau and uh, normal stress on the x axis and uh, with uh, failure plane uh, failure envelope uh, uh, which uh, the failure envelope with c dash and phi dash and uh, these are the effective strength parameters which are actually called and uh, we have a circle a and uh, circle b and circle a is well below the you know more coulomb failure envelope and uh, so it is uh, said that uh, the combinations of stresses uh, uh, which are uh, major principal stress sigma 1a and sigma 3a is such that uh, you know the it is in the safe state of stress. But uh, when you look into the circle B uh, you know it is tangential uh, to the Mohr Coulomb uh, envelope and, uh, and uh, it is actually having uh, a point of uh, you know uh, uh, you know this point of uh, coincidence here. And when you draw the line this is the angle of uh, inclination of the failure plane and you can see that uh, this is the tau max this is the tau max and this is the tau f that is the shear stress at failure. So uh, if you look into this here uh, even though the stress combination uh, you know sigma n and tau max of circle A uh, are obviously greater than the circle B it is actually circle B that is on the verge of uh, uh, circle B it is on the verge of failure. So if you look into that circle A and circle B even though the stress combinations of sigma uh, n and tau max for the circle A uh, uh, is actually uh, you know uh, greater than the that of circle B it is the circle B that is on the uh, verge of failure. So circle A is in the safe state of stress. So the state of stress represented by the more circles that exist beyond the uh, you know more Coulomb envelope cannot exist. So that means that if you are having uh, a more Coulomb uh, uh, you know the more circle above the uh, failure envelope that means that uh, it indicates that the failure would have already take place. So if you are having a uh, you know uh, more circle which is uh, well below the uh, failure envelope then it is said that uh, it is in the safe state of stress the more circle is stable. And when it is in when it is in when 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 it when it in comes in contact with the more column failure envelope, there is a possibility that the failure attains. So that is at failure. That is the more circle at failure. And then there is no possibility of the existence of more circle above the failure envelope because that by that time already failure would have taken place. So here uh, we actually define the factor of safety which is uh, nothing but uh, tau FF uh, that is the available uh, 
divided by the shear stress which is actually applied. So the shear stress can be due to the driving stresses either because of the sulphate loading or because of uh, seepage or due to uh, you know uh, certain uh, perturbance uh, or due to some certain external loading. So the factor of safety is uh, tau FF available to tau F uh, applied. So if the stress if the stresses increase so that the failure occurs then the more circle becomes tangent to the more failure and load that is what we have seen with the circle B the combination is such that uh, that is actually is regarded as the failure circle. So according to more failure uh, hypothesis the failure occurs on the plane inclined at alpha and then when the shear stress uh, on that plane is of alpha uh, tau FF. So this is not the largest or the maximum shear stress in the element. So we can see that in the circle B here the maximum shear stress if you look into it that is actually is more than the failure shear stress but the combination is such that you know where you have got a normal stress and tau F is such that it actually you know comes in becomes tangential to the Mohr circle and then it is regarded as the so this is according to the hypothesis where if the stresses increase so that the failure occurs and then the Mohr circle becomes tangent to the Mohr failure and all. So um, so this is not the largest uh, or maximum shear stress in the element. So the tau max, the tau f actually is less than the tau max. Uh, but the maximum shear stress, if you look into that, acts on the plane inclined at uh, 45 degrees, uh, is equal to tau max is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 f by 2. So if you look into uh, this here, when it, when I, when we take uh, uh, you know at this point, this is uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by by 2. Uh, and then it is in, it is acting on the plane which is inclined at 45 degrees here. So it is not on that plane. So the maximum shear stress acts on the plane inclined at 45 degrees and is equal to sigma uh, sigma n f minus sigma 3 uh, f by 2, which is actually greater than tau f f, which we are actually have uh, just now discussed. Now let us uh, you know question which might uh, come is that why you know does not failure occur on 45 degrees plane? So when it is actually the shear stress is actually maximum along that failure plane why not actually the failure is actually unique uh, the failure plane why it is not uh, common. Uh, it cannot because uh, on that plane the shear strength available is greater than the tau max uh, because the shear strength available if you look into it here uh, uh, here when you when you see here uh, if, you, if you see the combination of this uh, sigma plus uh, uh, you know the tau max the shear strength is actually available is actually more than uh, you know though this uh, on this 45 degrees plane the shear stress is actually maximum the shear strength available to avert the failure is actually uh, you know uh, greater than uh, you know tau max. So because of that you know what uh, it implies is that the failure cannot actually occur uh, on the 45 degrees plane. So here uh, we, we have shown a more Coulomb uh, envelope which is a linear version which is actually assumed in the so more failure envelope is you know you can see the non-linear variation here. Now if you look into this here if you have, you have got a circle which is has a major principle stress sigma 1 and sigma 3 and this is you know the tau f and this is circle is actually regarded as stable because the, the, the tau f f is actually you know is here this is vertical ordinate is tau f f. The shear stress, the shear, the the shear stress which is actually there is only tau f. Now let us consider, you know, if you are having a, you know, like more circle, where this is the envelope which is like this, and then we are having the maximum shear stress which actually acts on that 45 degrees plane. So this is the maximum shear stress. And the, but failure is actually occurring on that plane which is actually alpha f which is actually different from uh, the 45 degrees maximum shear stress plane. Then we have discussed that the combination is such that the shear strength is actually available uh, you know on uh, the, you know this plane is actually more than what actually uh, you know the shear stress is. So this condition is actually represented by the distance uh, from the maximum point on the Mohr circle up to the more more uh, more failure envelope or more column failure frame. So this would be the shear strength available when normal stress available on the 45 degrees plane was sigma 1 plus sigma 3 f by 2. So this is the shear strength available when sigma n is equal to sigma 1 f plus sigma 3 f by 2 that is at the strength that is at this point. So available is actually here what you can be seen is that this point is actually is the shear strength available 
and the maximum shear stress on the 45 degrees plane is tau max here. So because this ordinate vertical ordinate is actually if you look into this on the Mohr circle tau sigma plot is actually more than the tau max. So it also explains you know why you know the failure plane will not be on the 45 degrees plane but there are some exceptional cases when you are actually having a saturated and undrained conditions for a given soil there is a possibility that the failure plane occurs actually on the plane of maximum shear stress that that is possible for when you are actually doing you know attempts to make determine the shear strength in the laboratory where you actually or you have a condition where you have saturated and undrained conditions then the particularly for either for pure clays or when these conditions provide and there is a possibility that you actually will have the you know occurrence of failure plane at 45 degrees. But with these two you know discussion what we have so this is you know a stable circle but when the circle actually you know comes in contact with the Mohr Coulomb failure envelope then that is the point this point from the sigma 3f to this this is actually the angle of failure plane what we are calling. So this is the angle of failure plane. So the question is that when we have the shear stress maximum shear stress on 45 degrees plane why not actually the failure plane you know occurs along the you know the plane of maximum shear stress. So for that what we are actually trying to explain for if you are having a given state of stresses which are actually shown here from the graphically it is actually shown here you can see that this is you know the shear strength available when the normal stress that is at the center here. So this is 0 to this is sigma 3 f plus sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 so that becomes sigma n is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. So when this actually combination is actually there so you know what we have to attain failure is you know this much we should be there but what we have is only tau max. So because of that you know you know the failure cannot actually take place on the the so called plane of maximum shear stress. But as it has been told that the only exception would be when shear strength is independent of normal stress that means that when the more circle more failure envelope is horizontal and with the and phi is equal to 0 that means that when you have got tau is equal to sigma that means that when you have you know sometimes you have got an element such a way that the lateral you know that that is the minor principal stress is 0 that is sigma 3 is equal to 0 and then you know this is the you know the stress at failure then in that case also you can see that when this is the point then this will be the Mohr Coulomb failure envelope which indicates that the angle of inclination of that Mohr Coulomb failure envelope is 0 and then this intercept is nothing but C so which is nothing but tau is equal to C and then this point which is you know is a failure plane which is actually you know alpha f is equal to 45 degrees here. So such materials are called purely cohesive or obvious reason or this may result in completely saturated or undrained conditions. So these materials are called as purely cohesive soils or pure, pure, pure clay soils when they exhibit this type of this thing then it is actually you know results in you know the failure plane occurs along the plane of maximum shear stress. So now consider an element which is actually subjected to the state of stress which is actually shown here sigma c is the confining pressure initial confining pressure let us assume that we have vertical and horizontal direction this can be you know achieved by applying a by pressurizing water and so that we will be able to get the identical pressures on the principal stresses and that is the principal planes both horizontal and vertical and so initially when we have applied sigma c so initially the Mohr circle is actually is a point then with that pressure when we try to increase delta sigma let us say that so this is actually possible when we have you know a certain element at a certain ground when what will happen is that when the that element is actually subjected to a certain increase in pressure due to foundation loading or an embankment construction there is an increase in stress if that increase in stress is such a way 
that uh, the state of the stress in the element is such a way that the Mohr circle actually uh, becomes tangential to the Mohr Coulomb failure analog then there is an attenuation of uh, failure uh, uh, failure and then that combination actually gives the, the shear strength uh, at failure. So if that situation actually happens in the field either from the uh, stability of the slopes in the dams or in earth pressure problems uh, the failure state is actually attained. So here uh, a typical stress element is shown here and uh, with uh, increase in the uh, load uh, which is uh, sigma c plus delta sigma the Mohr circle is actually here and, uh, and the state is such that it is still stable but when the sigma c plus sigma delta sigma is increased to such an extent that you know it becomes tangential to the Mohr Coulomb uh, failure envelope then, uh, then uh, the soil element uh, attains to the failure. So the soil element does not fail if the Mohr circle is actually contained within the envelope that means that it is well below the envelope then uh, the uh, you know the uh, failure uh, for is not yet attained in the sample. Now let us assume that uh, the Mohr circle actually uh, Mohr circle traverses because of the increase in sigma naught plus delta sigma so sigma c plus delta sigma sigma c is initial applied and then delta sigma is actually increased continuously then the circle migrates uh, towards uh, right with uh, you know what we are doing is that we are actually maintaining same sigma c and then started increasing so with that what will happen is that you reach a certain state uh, you know in the element uh, in the failure plane where uh, it actually attains uh, tau ff that is this point and uh, and the the wherever actually uh, they it becomes tangential so that is actually is alpha f that is a, you know inclination of the failure plane uh, um, where the you know the shear strength at failure is actually acting along the failure plane and this is the normal st uh, stress at failure along failure plane and it is actually on this thing so failure occurs when more circle touches the envelope so the circle traverses initially when we have uh, when you uh, prepare the sample and uh, apply sigma c all throughout uh, it, the more circle condition is nothing but a, a point on the tau sigma uh, envelope and then once we continue to increase uh, the uh, the you know the vertical uh, stress that is delta sigma plus plus then there is uh, a possibility that as the loading uh, progresses the more circle becomes larger and larger. Uh, now, uh, uh, so if you further look into it, if you take the circle at failure, let us say that uh, sigma c plus delta sigma combination uh, that is at the at failure and the sigma c automatically it becomes at failure for the uh, given state of stress. So, uh, this is the loading plane orientation, it is actually acting on the vertical plane that is this parallel to this one, uh, parallel to this one, this is perpendicular. So, it is actually acting on this, so this is the parallel to this plane and uh, parallel to this plane is this one on which actually the stresses are acting. So if there are no shear stresses uh, definitely they are eligible to be called as uh, you know the principal planes major principal plane and minor principal plane and uh, the failure plane is actually oriented at uh, 45 plus uh, 5 by 2 uh, with the horizontal. So that is the uh, you know inclination uh, from the pole here when you draw at a point of tangency that is actually 45 plus 5 by 2 and the plane of maximum shear stress is actually at 45 degrees. So uh, in terms of effective stresses uh, this uh, we have discussed already but uh, to illustrate further we have got uh, let us say that uh, vertical stress and uh, horizontal uh, stress on acting on a sample sigma h and sigma v and uh, when we have the pore water pressure uh, if it is uh, uh, then we have uh, is uh, subtracted from the total stresses then we have got effective stresses in vertical direction and horizontal direction and the pore water pressure acting in all directions. So for this you know when you have got you know the total stresses the Mohr circle actually shifts by a difference actually that is u. So sigma h dash is equal to sigma h minus u so by that you know the, the circle actually will become shift and so if you look into this here we actually have a failure envelopes for effective stress conditions and and you know uh, in uh, uh, in uh, total stress conditions they are different uh, so they can actually yield uh, different combinations of uh, so if you are actually having uh, under total stress conditions if you are actually getting uh, uh, the strength comp parameters which is actually uh, you know stress independent parameter c and uh, and uh, you know stress dependent parameter friction uh, then it is called c and phi and if you are actually doing with unrained conditions then it is called as cu and uh, phi u 
C suffix u, u indicates undrain, pi indicates the angle of internal friction or friction angle and undrained conditions. So, uh, but when we have uh, you know the effective stresses, effective stress, effective stress uh, conditions, uh, then it is actually said as C dash and uh, phi dash, where these are called effective uh, cohesion and uh, you know uh, effective cohesion and uh, effective friction angle or effective angle of internal friction. So these are actually shown here uh, in order to get uh, these parameters either in terms of total stress parameters or in terms of uh, effective stress parameters. Uh, we need to have different combinations of uh, you know the stress conditions need to be applied to the soil because it is with one circle we will not able to uh, you know ascertain uh, uh, you know for a given element. So in that case what we need to do is that we have to do it at a different uh, uh, combinations here in order to build up this uh, Mohr Coulomb uh, failure envelope either in total stress or in uh, effective uh, stress conditions. Uh, what is exactly we need to do is that sigma 3 1 uh, sigma 3 uh, sigma 1 uh, sigma 1 1 and then we have to do it on sigma 3 2 and uh, uh, sigma 1 2 and then uh, we can actually do it on uh, sigma 3 3 and sigma 1 3 and uh, the other one fourth combination is that sigma 3 4 and sigma 1 4. So when we put together uh, you know when the circles actually attain uh, these are the when these are actually uh, obtained as at failure then uh, you know when we draw the envelope uh, you know tangential to the these all these more circles and that envelope is actually is constructed um, um, where we can actually yield to the inclination of this envelope is actually uh, yield lead to give uh, friction angle and then this intercept actually gives uh, uh, you know the cohesion intercept but you know for some uh, normally consolidated soils and uh, uh, you know sands uh, when you are actually having uh, uh, particularly loose sands uh, under drainage conditions there is a possibility that the C dash is equal to 0 then the envelope is actually uh, you know uh, is uh, passing to the horizon. So uh, when you have the uh, in, in terms of sigma dash uh, so the same uh, when you measure the water pressure pore water pressure and when you subtract this uh, from the total stresses then you will actually get effective uh, stress circles. Uh, so when you have the combination of these uh, most circles and that can lead to a construction of a, a failure envelope here which is uh, shown here. So uh, then you know we can actually further uh, use this uh, knowledge and try to get the principal stress uh, relations relations at failure and uh, these are actually worked out uh, by using this uh, you know more circle which is actually shown at failure where we have got tau versus uh, sigma uh, tau versus sigma dash and uh, this is the element which has been subjected to sigma 1 dash in the on the major principal uh, plane and sigma 3 dash on the minor principal plane and the failure surface is actually assumed to be inclined at theta or another notation which you are following is alpha f where f is the failure plane and then this is the normal stress acting on the failure plane uh, uh, that is sigma dash f and tau f is the uh, principal stress acting uh, the, the shear stress acting on the failure plane. So uh, when we have this more circle uh, let us say that when we have got uh, certain uh, cohesion intercept c dash and uh, the angle of internal friction phi dash that is the effective stress uh, more circle and uh, so the combination is that sigma 3 dash which is nothing but sigma 3 minus u when you take then the we have got sigma 3 dash and here sigma 1 uh, minus u that is uh, sigma 1 dash. So here uh, you know this point is the point of tangency and uh, so here we can write from the uh, by following the geometry uh, tau f is equal to tau f is equal to that is the major uh, uh, you know shear stress uh, which is actually is uh, uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. So we can write tau f is equal to sigma 1 minus uh, sigma 3 uh, sigma sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash by 2 sin 2 theta uh, and uh, sigma dash f is equal to half uh, sigma 1 uh, dash plus sigma 3 dash plus half uh, sigma 1 minus uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash cos 2 theta. So we have the combinations of tau f and sigma f uh, can be uh, you know at uh, failure so this uh, uh, tau f is actually given uh, by this uh, ordinate vertical ordinate and sigma f uh, is uh, you know this is nothing but uh, 
sigma 1 plus uh, sigma 3 by 2 plus half sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So by using the uh, geometry of the from here we can actually get the tau f and uh, sigma dash f and uh, if you are if you are consulting here c dash uh, as this vertical intercept and with an inclination of phi dash this small horizontal intercept is actually called as c dash cot phi dash c dash cot phi dash. So theta is the theoretical angle between the major principal plane and uh, the plane of failure. So from the uh, uh, you know the geometry we can actually extend uh, from here uh, that uh, uh, sin phi dash you know from the uh, from, from this here the sin phi dash can be written as sin phi dash can be written as half sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash by 2 half sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash by 2 minus minus uh, you know uh, this ordinate divided by uh, divided by c dash plus cot phi dash plus half sigma 1 plus sigma 3 dash by 2. So that is c dash plus quad phi plus uh, you know we get uh, of sigma 1 plus sigma 3 dash by 2 because this is sigma 3 dash plus sigma 1 uh, minus uh, sigma 3 dash by 2 with that we will be able to get uh, this uh, horizontal ordinate. So now sin phi dash is equal to of uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 dash by 2 divided by c dash cot phi dash plus of sigma 1 dash plus uh, sigma 3 dash by 2. Uh, uh, so sin phi dash is equal to half sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash divided by c dash cot phi dash plus half uh, sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash by 2. So when we simplify further this is uh, reduced to sigma 1, uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash is equal to sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash sin phi dash plus 2 c dash cos phi dash that is simple uh, by cross multiplication we have got that the following equation uh, you know is uh, referred to as the Mohr Coulomb uh, uh, you know failure criterion and uh, which actually gets simplified to sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3, sigma 3 dash tan square 45 plus phi dash by 2 plus 2 c dash tan square uh, 2 c dash tan 45 plus uh, phi by 2 it is also called as sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 tan square alpha plus 2 c tan alpha and uh, where alpha is the angle of inclination of the failure plane. Um, uh, and uh, uh, this is also called as the Bell's equation sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 tan square alpha plus 2 c dash tan alpha uh, or in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, we also indicate by n suffix phi. So in that case uh, you know uh, if you write uh, n phi is equal to tan square 45 plus uh, phi dash by 2 we can write sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 dash uh, uh, n phi plus 2 c dash root n phi. So when we have let us say that uh, c dash is equal to 0 uh, then in that case uh, sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash sigma 3 dash tan square 45 plus phi by 2. So that indicates that uh, the envelope uh, runs like this when you have got a c dash is equal to 0 this component is actually equal to 0. So with that uh, what we get is that uh, you know sin phi dash is equal to sigma 1 my, uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash by 2 divided by sigma, sigma 1 plus sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash by 2. So this is actually also when c dash is equal to 0 and uh, these uh, uh, identities also varied for uh, you know uh, also for granular soils. But in the special case when phi is equal to 0 when uh, phi actually becomes 0 then uh, what we say is that sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to 2 c. So when phi is equal to 0. Uh, you know the then we indicate that uh, this is actually is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to 2 c. So what we have uh, said is that for in case of granular soil we can say that sigma 1 is equal to sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash tan square 45 plus phi by 2. But when we are having uh, you know the general equation which is actually referred as the Mohr Coulomb failure criterion uh, referred, referred as the Mohr Coulomb failure criterion as sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash tan square. 45 plus phi by 2 and 2 c dash tan 45 plus phi by 2 and uh, this is also indicated as sigma 1 dash is equal to sigma 3 dash tan square uh, alpha and 2 c uh, 2 c dash uh, tan alpha where alpha is the angle of inclination of the failure plane. So here further this is actually indicated here uh, wherein uh, we actually have got uh, uh, you know the failure plane which is actually inclined. Uh, uh, with uh, you know the conjugate failure planes also shown here 
this is uh, this is the conjugate failure plane other when the sample is actually homogeneous as it has been told uh, this is actually is possible and uh, so uh, so you actually have the failure planes which are uh, you know uh, which which can actually have inclinations 45 plus 5 by 2 and 45 minus 5 by 2 so the important uh, points uh, which actually have cropped up from the discussion are that the coupling uh, more circle with the coulomb's uh, frictional law allows us to define the shear failure based on the, the stress state of the soil so that's what what we calling uh, as the more coulomb failure criterion so by uh, coupling more circle uh, with uh, coulomb's frictional law we are able to define the shear failure based uh, based on the stress state of the soil so the stress state of the soil in a given at a given level can be arised due to uh, you know the how we actually apply the loading so the more coulomb criterion which is uh, you know uh, for a let us say for granular soils when it uh, comes out to that uh, this is sin phi dash is equal to half sigma 1 minus sigma 1 dash minus sigma 3 dash by 2 divided by half sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash by 2 so this when we simplify uh, we get the uh, relationships that is ob uh, oblique relationships which are actually sigma 1 dash uh, f sigma 1 dash suffix f divided by sigma 3 dash suffix f is equal to 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi. So this uh, from the trigonometry identities when you use this is nothing but tan square 45 plus phi by 2 uh, and uh, similarly when we have uh, sigma 3 dash f by sigma 1 and dash f then it is 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi wherein uh, we have tan square uh, 45 minus phi by, by 2. So failure occurs according to the uh, Mohr Coulomb uh, criterion when the soil attains the maximum effective stress uh, obliquity that is sigma 1 dash f by sigma 3 dash f when it becomes maximum then the failure actually occurs. So failure occurs according to the Mohr Coulomb criterion when the soil attains the maximum uh, effective stress obliquity the effect the ratio has to be maximum that is sigma 1 dash f by f by sigma 3 dash f has to be maximum. So uh, what we understood from the, uh, the uh, from this discussion is that coupling more circle with Coulomb frictional law allows us to define the shear failure based on the, the stress test on the soils. Then we have also given uh, come out with the oblique uh, relationship which are actually valid for glanular soils or uh, frictional soils is sigma 1 dash f by sigma 3 dash f is equal to 1 plus sin phi dash by 1 minus sin phi dash is equal to n phi. Uh, and uh, sigma 3 dash f sometimes what will have is that we have uh, you know let us say that when we have got a earth pressure condition when the wall is actually moving towards the backfill uh, with a constant vertical stress then uh, there can be the horizontal stress uh, that is uh, lateral stress is actually more than uh, you know uh, that is uh, you know more than the uh, sigma 1 f. So in that case uh, sigma 3 dash f by sigma 1 dash f so where that identity yields is that 1 minus sin phi dash by 1 plus sin phi dash and which is actually is a tan square 45 minus phi by 2 uh, this is what actually has been indicated here uh, when you have a combination such that uh, you know you actually have a failure plane which is actually uh, the uh, uh, such a way that you know you we get uh, uh, the so called uh, uh, you know uh, sigma, sigma 3 dash f by sigma 1 dash f is equal to tan square 45 minus phi by 2. So the principal stress relations of relations at failure further given here uh, uh, that is for case where sigma 1 greater than sigma 3 that is sigma 1 is equal to sigma 3 tan square 45 plus 5 by 2 plus 2 c tan 45 plus 5 by 2 and when you have a situation uh, where uh, sigma 3 is equal to uh, sigma 1 tan square 45 minus 5 by 2 minus 2 c tan 45 minus 5 by 2. So this is in case when you are having both uh, c and uh, friction angle. So uh, after having uh, obtained this uh, then we can also uh, link this Mohr Coulomb failure envelope with the uh, with uh, uh, you know PQ space and this we actually have discussed in our uh, previous lectures and uh, where P uh, is actually indicated as uh, sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 where Q is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 when you have that you know when uh, we have said that uh, the KF is the uh, failure uh, uh, failure line and which is actually indicated at psi so here also and this indicates this combination indicates that you actually get uh, uh, you know the equation uh, the point is actually tangential 
So, this intercept is the vertical intercept is A and this vertical intercept this, uh, this inclination is psi. Similarly, when you when you take the Mohr Coulomb uh, failure envelope and uh, we have tau and tau sigma and where we actually have got a Mohr circle with an inclination actually is phi and uh, uh, C as the vertical in intercept then tau f is equal to uh, the so called tau f is equal to uh, combination of C plus uh, sigma f tan phi. So, sigma f is that uh, normal stress at uh, failure. So, uh, from the P q diagram the shear strength parameters uh, phi and C may be may readily be computed. Suppose if you are having a P q diagram where P is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 and Q is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. So, from there also we can actually uh, you know determine uh, you know the parameters phi and C uh, like this by equating uh, uh, C uh, uh, with uh, A by cos phi A by cos phi this intercept and uh, then uh, you know the sin phi the sin phi is equal to tan psi. So, sin phi is equal to tan psi. So, with that you know we can actually get uh, uh, psi is equal uh, phi is equal to uh, you know uh, uh, from this relationship we can actually get. So, this is uh, you know once you know that uh, the relationship between K f line and Mohr Coulomb uh, failure envelope can be obtained. So, uh, and uh, uh, the another issue which uh, we need to discuss is that what is the effect of uh, you know intermediate principle stress sigma 2 on the condition of failure. Though suppose if you are having a cylindrical sample what we say is that uh, sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3, uh, but uh, if you look into it uh, you know whether this uh, intermediate principle stress actually has got an effect on the condition of failure. Because you know the more uh, Coulomb failure envelope will not actually take this, this into consideration. So, if you look into this here when you have got a sigma 1 and sigma 2 you actually have got a circle like this and when you have got a sigma 2 and sigma 3 the sigma 2 is nothing but the intermediate uh, principal stress and the sigma 3 is the minor principal stress and sigma 1 is the major principal stress. So, we have the sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 there are the principal stresses. So, uh, by definition if you look into it sigma 2 dash actually lies sigma 2 lies between somewhere between the major principal stress and minor principal stress. And uh, if you are actually talking about uh, you know the, the failure envelope it is the uh, you know the major principal stress major principal stress uh, the Mohr circle which is actually resulted because of the major principal stress and minor principal stress that is the one which is actually uh, you know gets tangential to the Mohr failure envelope. So, the by definition sigma 2 lies somewhere between the major principal stress and uh, the Mohr circles for the three principal stresses look like uh, those actually shown here and but the one which is actually becomes tangential to the uh, you know more failure envelope at failure is resulting due to uh, more circle which is resulting due to sigma 1 and sigma 3 combinations. So, uh, it is obvious that uh, you know from this discussion that uh, sigma 2 can have no influence on the conditions at failure for the more circle uh, more failure criterion and no matter what uh, magnitude it has because it falls within uh, uh, these two stresses. And the intermediate principal stress sigma 2 probably does not does have an influence on in real soil, but the more uh, Coulomb failure uh, theory does not consider it. So, the more Coulomb failure theory does not consider the inter inter intermediate principal stress and we also said that uh, there is actually not having influence on the uh, conditions at failure. So, some limitations on the Mohr Coulomb theory can be seen uh, where we have got uh, you know assumed that uh, the linearization of the limit stress envelope. So, the possible uh, results in possible war estimation of the safety factor in slope stability calculations and difficulties in uh, calibration because of the linearization and uh, this is also valid for uh, you know usual experimental range in the laboratory wherein you can see that uh, you know this linearization is actually valid up to uh, you know certain range. Uh, and then further uh, we actually have uh, more Coulomb failure criterion is well proven for most of the geometrials, but uh, data for the clays uh, you know the number of uh, uh, attempts are actually being made and uh, the soils and shearing ex exhibit variable volume change the characteristics depending upon pre consolidation pressure uh, which cannot be accounted uh, with more Coulomb theory. And in soft soils uh, volumetric uh, plastic strains on shearing are compressive that is negative dilation whilst uh, the more Coulomb model will predict continuous uh, dilation. So, these are the some of the uh, you know the limitations which are actually uh, you know resulting uh, due to uh, 
uh, you know the uh, Mohr Coulomb uh, uh, failure uh, criterion or Mohr Coulomb theory. Uh, we can actually look an example problem and this will be solving in the next lecture where we in the figure below uh, shows a soil profile at a site or a proposed building. So determine the increase in vertical effective stress at which a soil element at a depth of 3 meters under the center of the building will failure uh, will fail. Uh, if the increase in lateral uh, uh, effective stress is 40 percent of the increase in vertical effective stress, the quotient of lateral pressure at rest is K0 is given as 0.5 and the friction angle is given as 30 degrees and uh, the saturated unit weight is assumed to be uh, 18 kilo per meter cube both above ground water table and below ground water table. Then we need to calculate what is the uh, you know the delta sigma at which actually the failure occurs for a given uh, condition. So here uh, phi dash is equal to 30 degrees means the more uh, failure envelope uh, more column failure envelope, envelope uh, is given to us. So based on that you know we can actually calculate. So in this particular lecture we try to discuss about the in, the in detail discussion we had on the more column failure criterion and uh, we have uh, thrown light on uh, how the principal stress relations relationships can be deduced and then uh, we connected with uh, you know created initiated a discussion on the limitations of uh, more column theory.